Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be looking at Western saws versus Japanese style saws. Which one is better and which one should you choose? Let the fight begin! <laughs> So first off, let's look at some of the main basic differences between them. With Japanese saws, they come in a bunch of different styles, from Ryobi to Dazuki and a few others. And they follow a lot of the same ideas as Western saws, in that you would have a panel saw that has no back, so you can continue down as far as you want. You have a back saw, which gives you a little bit better control, but you can't go down as far, otherwise you run into the back. And even with Western and Japanese, they even had their own designs on bow saws or frame saws. The tooth geometry between them is even fairly similar. With rip cutting teeth, you have a chisel that is peeling out the wood. With the cross cutting tooth, you have a knife that slices the wood. The Japanese styles tend to have a finer tooth, and they also tend to have less set on the saw, whereas a Western style, style saw tends to have a little bit more set, and the tooth tends to be a bit fatter, so it has more meat behind it. The other big difference you'll see is that a Western saw tends to have a thicker, more sturdy plate, and a Japanese saw tends to have a little bit more flexible, uh, thinner plate that will give you a thinner curve. But the big difference between them is the difference in all Japanese and Western woodworking. Japanese saws work on the pull stroke, and Western saws work on the push stroke. So because of this, you hear a lot of people saying that, ooh, a Western saw or a Japanese saw is better because it is more ergonomic to pull, or it is more ergonomic to push, or you put more effort behind the saw, or you, you get more effort when you use both hands to pull the saw. Anytime you hear someone saying that one gives you a stronger push, is more ergonomic, or gives you better control one or the other, don't trust what they're saying. That is, it, it, it's foolish. Uh, they both will do the same work. They both can do the same job just as good as one another. Each one has a slight difference, and it really comes down to the person that's using them. Some people much prefer to work on the pull stroke, and some people much prefer to work on the push stroke. Now, all of that being said, there are a few key features that will affect the beginning woodworker in how they use them. Number one, with a western saw, when you're pushing the saw forward, the teeth that are actually guiding the cut are on my side of the saw. The first tooth to engage will be on my side of the saw. So as I'm pushing the saw in, the tooth on the back side of the saw is not going to be guiding or steering the saw. If I put more force to one side or the other, it's the tooth on the back side, my side, that will be guiding the cut. With a Japanese style saw, as I'm cutting, the leading tooth is on the back side of the saw, not on my side of the cut. And this is where this becomes very important. And this is where beginners tend to have a little bit of a problem with a Western style saw, is when they're pushing it, all of the control is on their side of the board. So any slight movement in my hand is going to cause the saw to veer off course one way or the other. And it's gonna start having a problem following that line. And if I over control the saw a little bit, it'll veer off this way. And then I over control the saw to bring it back this way and it goes off the line that way. And a beginner is gonna have a lot of problem because they are trying to force the saw to do something. And that makes it very difficult because when you put a little bit of effort into the hand, the saw will then respond with a lot of work moving one way or the other. With a Japanese style saw, the steering teeth, the teeth with all the control, are on the other side of the saw. So I have to put a lot of force into this in order to get the saw to turn just a little bit. It takes a lot of force to turn a Japanese style saw. And that is great for the beginner because with the beginner, they're trying to over control the saw. And when you're trying to over control the saw, you're only gonna be putting a little bit of effort into making the saw go. So as long as you start the saw right, and the saw is straight to begin with, it's going to follow that straight line all the way down. With a Western style saw, you can start it perfectly straight, but the moment you put a little bit of force into your hand, it's gonna start taking it off course. So a beginner may often have a lot of problems with a Western style saw. And a Japanese style saw may be a little bit easier because as long as you can line it up and give yourself a straight line, it will go straight down. Now the problem comes if you do set up this on the line, but you set it up ever so slightly off, it's gonna keep going off and off and off, and it takes a lot of force to try and bring this back onto line. Whereas with a Western style saw, if I set it up a little bit off course, I can very lightly tweak it and pull it back into line as long as I don't over control it. 
And that tends to be where the skill comes in, is a Western style saw takes more skill to start to begin to control because it's very easy to over control the saw. You need to have a very delicate hand that can easily maneuver this to where you want it to be. But with a Japanese style saw, most people can pick this up and very quickly learn how to cut a nice straight line because there isn't as much fear of over controlling it. Now that doesn't mean that one saw takes more skill than the other. A Japanese style saw takes a lot of skill to learn, to hone, and to become very accurate, fast, and efficient with it. Whereas a Western style saw once you learn how to use it and you learn how not to over control it, it just bulldogs through it. So they really are two very different styles of woodworking. And this goes into the differences in hand planes as well in pulling the hand plane towards you as opposed to Western hand planes pushing them away from you. It is that same body mechanic that you kind of learn from one to the other. Now other things you're going to come across, the Japanese style's uh, dovetail planes have a very, very thin, thin blade. And that can happen because you are pulling them, the plate is under tension so it will keep a nice straight line which will give you a really thin delicate accurate curve whereas a western saw even a thin detailed dovetail saw has a much thicker plate and that's because you're pushing it the whole plate is under compression so the plate needs to be strong enough so that it doesn't bend and twist in the cut so that means you're going to be getting a much thinner more delicate cut with a japanese saw over a western saw as to the set difference between the saws that really can depend on you and how much you put into the set and what you work on them then we can start to get into the sharpening a lot of the japanese saws come with a disposable blade. Yes, you can get blades that are sharpenable, um, but it's often so cheap just to get a new blade and get one that's just as good as one you'd sharpen that a lot of people like to go with those disposable blades. Also, a Japanese saw tends to be a little bit more difficult to sharpen because the teeth are narrower and the angles you're cutting are much, much finer. And so that means that these take a bit more work and a bit more skill to sharpen, whereas a Western style saw, anyone with a triangular file and a little bit of time can learn to sharpen one of these really quickly and easily. So which is better? Uh, honestly, neither is better. They each have their pros and cons and their differences. If you are new to woodworking and you're wanting to get into it and you don't have a whole lot of skill, a Japanese saw may be the way to go because, well, they're honestly a little bit cheaper to get than a Western style saw because they're a little simpler. And number two, they're easier to control because you're not trying to teach your body not to over control the saw. So a lot of people when they're first getting into hand tool woodworking, I tell them, you know, a Japanese saw might be for you. But if you're gonna be using all Western hand planes, you may find yourself having a little bit of difficulty because you're pulling with the saws and pushing with the planes, in which case you may want to spend the time and effort required to learn how to not over control a handsaw, in which case you may want to spend the time to learn how to not over control a Western saw. Uh, the reason I use Western saws is it's what most of my viewers use, and so I find myself more, far more comfortable with them. I haven't spent as much time to really, really get comfortable with a Japanese saw, though I do pull them out from time to time to try and keep myself brushed up and, uh, and accurate with them. Most of the time you're going to find that the Japanese saws tend to be the cheaper option to begin. And with uh, Western saws, even the antiques, it's hard to find an antique saw that is restorable for under 40, 50 bucks. And if you want to get into them new, even these Veritas are going to be, you know, 70, 80, a hundred dollars each, not to mention what some of the really, really nice ones are, which are just astronomically priced as opposed to the Japanese saws. You can get a really nice Japanese saw for a hundred bucks and you can pick up these functional ones for 30 35 bucks and they will treat you very well so which one should you get uh, honestly I'm gonna say you really need to ask yourself that the question what are you interested in uh, what are you focused on are you looking for a particular historical type of woodworking are you looking for something that is functional for you are you looking for something just to get some woodworking done are you looking for something to learn on are you looking for something that takes more skill are you looking for something there's so many different reasons to buy one or the other or why not buy both? This is one of these topics that a lot of people really like to fight over. Which one's better? Stop fighting over it. They're both great saws and you can learn fantastic things one way or the other. They'll both treat you well and they will both do just the same woodworking 
It just depends on which one you're more comfortable with. So I hope this may have stopped a few arguments, although I'm pretty sure it has started quite a few. Go ahead and throw those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. <laughs> and, and let's have a little bit of fun down there and see what we can do with our saws in the future. So let me know, which one do you use? Do you use Japanese or Western saws and why do you use them? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Also, if you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and don't forget to hit the all notifications when you ring the bell. Otherwise, you'll probably be missing a few notifications about which videos are coming out. So I think that'll do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I love being a YouTuber starting arguments because I can be the guy that stands back and let's say, it's what you and you fight. And then I get to stand back and watch everyone make a fool of themselves.